Um, optical coherence tomography is the most commonly used imaging device in ophthalmic practices. What it is, is it provides a cross-section view of the retina. It um, is a qualitative and quantitative um, information of retinal patho um, pathology. It uses light, not sound. The OCT was commercially introduced in 1995, so it's newer to the field. Um, what my job to do, for us to do for the physician is to have an understanding of how retinal disease processes may affect the patient's vision, and in diseases where the central fixation is affected, the OCT can be difficult for the patient. Um, it's my responsibility also to know the machine and the disease and to be able to make adjustments to give the information that they need. Generally, when we do this scan, do this test, we use two different scans. We do a volume scan, and it's a continuous movie that lasts approximately 1.6 seconds. Now, if you've ever had this test done, you'll know that we'll say, okay, look at the fixation target, and then we'll say, hold it, don't move, don't blink, and then we'll say, hold it, hold it, hold it. And I'm sure you've heard those words before, right? The reason why we say that is because it's a continuous scan. Now, if you have ever had a CAT scan done, you know that they'll say, take a breath, hold your breath. And I actually asked a friend of mine who's a radio in radiology, and she said that sometimes they'll ask you to hold your breath for 30 seconds during a CAT scan. And I know 1.6 seconds seems like a long time, but it really, it's longer, I know, it's longer than you, th I know it seems like a long time, but that's the reason why, is because it's a continuous scan, and if you blink during that, it interrupts the scan. After that, it gives a us a measurement in microns, and it looks like it th as a thickness. The second scan lacks approximately 0 0.6 seconds. It's a higher resolution scan aimed specifically at an area depending on what we see during the first scan. And um, it's looking for a presence of fluid and reflectivity. What we like about this test is it's non-invasive. It does not touch the eye. It's wheelchair friendly. There's no needles or dyes as of yet. Now who knows down the road if they'll be using needles or dyes, but as of yet there's not and it gives us a lot of information in a little bit of time. The hard part is, is if you have somebody who's had central loss maintaining the fixation, and if you have trouble seeing the fixation target, don't be shy, tell us. You know, I had one of my coworkers do um, an OCT on me. I have to tell you, that fixation target is not easy to see. I went, when she did it on me, it's, um, you're looking at a, gr a green asterisk with like a blinking red light in the center. And when I had it done, I'm like, that is not an easy target to see. And there's times where like, I can imagine someone with macular degeneration where that might look blurred or where there could be parts missing. If you're having trouble seeing the fixation target, tell the imager that you're having trouble seeing it. We can make adjustments to move that within the field where you can see it, or we can make adjustments on the machine to make for it. And the not blinking seems a long time. If you have dry eyes, tell us. We can, make, we can have you blink. We can put artificial tears in your eyes because if we don't have a smooth tear surface, we won't get a good scan. This is what we're looking at when we're doing the test. This is what we're looking for. This is um, actually the, it's given us to by the manufacturer. This is the normal scan pattern and the different layers of the retina. So this is what they consider normal. This is what we're looking for, what's anything abnormal from this. As I take you through, I'm gonna show you pictures of different type of disease pathologies, just so you can get a um, feel for what we're looking at. And I'm gonna take you, walk you through some case presentations. These are color photos of the right eye and left eye. Keep in mind that the area that we're looking for, it, I don't have a, um, I'll just show you. Can you hear? Uh, I'll take the microphone with me. 
I'm not shy. So this is the right eye and left eye. So keep in mind that these are the just color photos. The area that we're scanning when we do the OCT is this is the macula and the fovea. Now when we do the OCT, we're just scanning this area. Now that is only three millimeters, so it's not a big area. Sure. It's right here. So it's only three millimeters. No, that's the optic nerve. That's the nerve that connects the eye to the brain. But this is the area that we're scanning when we do the OCT test. So this is a patient, this is actually the scan. This is the volume scan that I was talking about. And this, oops, don't want to hurt myself. This is the measurement that I was talking about when we look at microns. And then we look at the thickness and we compare it from visit to visit. So that's like 338 microns and then we compare like for as you come back. This is a higher resolution scan where we're like going in at a higher resolution and these dark areas are like the fluid filled areas. This is a patient with like advanced macular degeneration. So this would be a patient who's re already receiving injections. So this is, um, she's still being treated but this is when you re are receiving injections you have, um, you start to scar down, but you're still getting treatment. But I wanted to show you how she's still having um, fluid, some bleeding, and she's still scarring down, just so you can get a feel of like very advanced disease. This is a patient with dry. Mem um, in Dr. Rao's talk, he talked about drusen. Drusen is yellow deposits in the retina. And you can see the drusen deposits right here. So even in early uh, macular degeneration, you can still see the drusen deposits. So it's very, a very sensitive test. And even here. Um, also for diabetics. This is a patient with non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Same thing, this is the volume scan we were talking about where we look at the center thickness. So remember that's the macula, okay? And then remember where I was talking about that it's the continuous scan? This is the continuous scan that's 1.6 seconds where we say hold your fixation, don't move, don't blink. This is the changes within the retina layer Any questions so far? And this is a patient with diabetic retinopathy and like changes from diabetic retinopathy like um, uh, bleeding of new blood vessels. But I wanted to show you how we get 3D images also from OCTs. So this is, we get a 3D image too. Plus, with OCTs, we can, um, with blood. So this is a patient where you see this blood here, and then the blood is over here on the OCTs, which the blood, OCT doesn't necessarily go through blood. It'll just give us more of a, it absorbs the light, but we'll still get a shadow defect over here. Any questions so far? Yeah. Um, not, in what way? Not really. <coughs> well, it dep not really. Diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration, there's two types. There's the wet type and the dry type. Diabetic retinopathy, there is non-proliferative disease and then there's proliferative disease. Proliferative disease is when you get new blood vessels growing, but the blood vessels are weak and brittle. So in that way, it's similar, but treatment is different. Um, treatment for the diabetic retinopathy is you usually laser when you have new blood vessels growing, where if you have wet macular degeneration, usually they go for injections right away, where if you have diabetic retinopathy and you have new blood vessels growing, they usually go for laser. 
This I was going to show you how if you have an artifact with a cataract, it will create a shadow on the OCT. That's the fluorescine dye test, that where you get the injection into a vein. That's called a fluorescein angiography. That's different. That's where we inject a dye into a vein and take pictures and they're bright flashes. This is um, just the scan. This is um, and whoa. This is actually a scan where there's movement during the scan. Not that we can't use the scan, but I wanted to show you how we're, if you do move during the scan, this is what we see. There's moving, it's not slow and continuous. There's, it's making it harder for us to obtain the information. That's why we're not trying to be different, difficult by saying hold still, but it's just, it really makes it harder for us to get information from it. So that's why we'll save the scan, but we might say, okay, well, we're going to repeat the scan because we want to get the best information possible to help you. You know, so we we'll might say, okay, and then we might have you sit back, blink a few times, and then we'll repeat the scan because it really does make it hard and it's not, I mean, we can use it and we can move it, the, we can move the points and do it again, but it really is not a good quality scan. Same thing here. This is a patient who had a retinal detachment, and then, and this is what I'm saying is we can always make adjustments. If like, if there is movement, we can always make adjustments to the scan. If you, you know, if this is what you know, if you feel that you can't hold still, or if you feel that this is what you can, or you can't hold your eyes open, or if you need to blink, you know, whatever. It doesn't mean we still can't make the adjustments. This is a patient who had a gas bubble after retinal detachment surgery. This is the bubble. Gas rises. This is the scan pattern. We can move the scan down so we can still get a good scan. This is the bubble here. We can always make adjustments. So really, if it's that, you know, if you think you can't hold still, just tell us. We can always make adjustments. And this is where I'm going to demonstrate how dynamic this machine is. These are just subtle changes within the retina. This eye is actually a 2020 eye, although I just want to show you the very subtle changes within the retina layers. It's just you get a lot of information out of there. And this is the newest thing that we're doing where it's enhanced depth imaging where we're raising the OCT up because there's new information on whether or not with early detection, earlier detection of macular degeneration on if you can raise the scan up and if you have a thicker sclera, they call it, which is like um, further back behind the retina and how you can measure it and whether or not you can detect macular degeneration earlier. That's for like maybe your family members or like your kids, something like that.